a graph structure component will have uh, loads because the function of the structure is to carry load and then to define shape of an object. So I mean that if talking about uh, here, you can see the few slash. The few slash here, here, if you remove the nose, remove the tail, this is just like a cylinder, a cylindrical column. That's why we analyze this few slash as a cylindrical column. So you have cylindrical column, and then you attach the wing, you attach the wing, wing with the engine. There's another engine on the side, and we have the tail here. We call it empennage, consists of vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer. And we have the nose here, nose section. So uh, this is how the aircraft have been constructed and they are bolted together. They are joined here at the wing, joined here of the nose section, half section, center section, tail section, and then panache, they're all bolted by wing. I'm sorry, they, they are bolted by boat and nuts. Okay. And each of this, if you see here is a barrel, it's a cylindrical tube. Uh, as a tubing, if you hold a tube, the tube will experience, if you put a load, either you can bend them, you can twist them. So first slash will be twisted, will be bent in flight. If you have bending, you will have a stresses you will have actual stresses where the area where it is stretch is tension, the area where it is compressed, it is compression, so action load. So this cylindrical column will experience uh, torsion, will experience uh, bending, which resulting in the uh, Axial stress, either compression or tension. Why we need to understand this? Because after this, we'll have to develop the loading for each part of the aircraft structure component for us to carry out the analysis. Whether the load we cannot carry out the analysis. So we need to know what kind of load and then later we carry how much load been carried to the area. Then we start doing the analysis on the repair. Start to recover the area, which will hopefully back to where it was. So now we also have wing. Wing also bend. So we have bending on the wing. Wing also twist as you operate the aileron. You change the curvature of the airfoil. So as you change the curvature of the airfoil, you also have center of pressure change. Then you can see there's some element of twist. And then obviously bending because you can see here inside the wing, there are fuel. And also you can see there is engine mount. So those give the load along the wing. And then at that point, uh, you install the engine, for example, it is a point where uh, it has some distance to the center so force over distance is a moment so it will be a moment here which will bend the fuselage or in the wing and then also will bend up in flight and on the ground bend down especially when the wing full of fuel and also at the wing root there is a shear uh, to cut this uh, wing root in piece Two, two section. Uh, you can see uh, you inspect the wing root of the aircraft. You can see massive boat uh, installed there. So those boat are uh, to carry out the shear load of the uh, wing joint. Okay. Question. 
I think you can see easily at me and there is one aircraft there. It's been, it's been partly removed, part section of it. And then you can see clearly the joint where they put the fuselage, where they put the wing together. Okay. Aircraft such a load in general. And then we also have twist on the fuselage. We have bending on the fuselage. And we have empennage here. Uh, you look at the construction of the vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, and also the wing, they are airfoil. And airfoil behave uh, similarly because as the flow flow over it, there will be a force acting on the surface. So those are the function of the uh, stabilizer. The function of the stabilizer is to uh, move the aircraft uh, vertical stabilizer, will create force sideways, left and right. And then uh, for the elevator, we create force or up and down, pitch. Okay. Any questions? So this is a detail how the load been uh the load diagram or the aircraft you can see here is a ground load from the landing gear let us see again some of the uh, design it's not uh damage tolerant it should be a uh, safe life because some of it we are very difficult to design redundancy or uh load transfer system. So that's why uh, we still use uh, uh, fatigue life or, or life, uh, such a uh, safe life in philosophy, which uh, after you found the aircraft been uh, used for so many cycles, we retire them. Okay, so you can see the load diagram here. Uh, you can see the wing, you can see the engine. And you can see the, you can see here on the shader, shader is flight load and then ground load. So the flight load here, okay, and the ground load. So again, the vertical riser, there's a force parallel to it to push it. Uh, and then here we have with the vertical forces acting on the stabilizer will be, will bend it. So they will have bending. And also we have uh, lift and drag will force the, the vehicle, uh, uh, into the liquid which uh, will give you a load, load okay now we have uh, another one we also look at the detail of the fuselage fuselage here, here you can see the weight of the fuselage weight of our fuselage weight of engine tail force download we have drag and thrust however we also do have your our uh, uh, the pressure there, there is also pressure here uh, because here uh, they can pressurize, but a certain altitude you have to uh, keep the ambient temperature. Then you have to pressurize the aircraft to the uh, almost sea level uh, pressure. Then uh, at high altitude, the lower pressure outside, high pressure uh, inside, then it pressurizes the aircraft. The aircraft tend to expand along the uh, it. No section. This is aft fuselage section. This is center fuselage section. So the center wing is inside the center fuselage. So this is the outer wing. So the inner wing is inside here. So inner wing to the outer wing is bolted. Yes, only bolt. So that's why uh, for this design, it, it is difficult to design as a damage tolerant and fail safe. So it's still, uh, for, it's, it's still safe life design. Safe life design means that's why the wing of aircraft having life. We sh should keep, we, sh we have to determine what will be the life of the wing and then we have to remove from service when the life is uh, uh, reached, when we reach the life. Because it is if you lost the boat, if you lost the wing fitting, Joint fitting, then we're gone. We do not have a criteria that we can design to be uh, 
uh, feel safe and also damage tolerant. Yes, it's bolted. Big book. <laughs> and many of them. That's why at Erod, when I was working for Erod, we replaced those uh, those center section, we re replaced the outer wing because it, we could just unboot them out. Okay, question again? I am uh, for large transfer aircraft, they design it properly. There's good fitting design, there's good wing joint design, so only inspection required uh, at the D check, the highest level check. Yes, there's inspection. That's why NDT uh, <laughs> is very demanded in this situation because uh, most of the area, the boat, the lock, the fitting, uh, we have to do NDT to make sure there's no crack, there, no failure. Otherwise, we lost the wing. So we also have other component. Uh, okay, from there, we make a, I make a map. You can agree, you can disagree with this, but you can think of it. Fuselage, what will be the load, will be weight of the forward fuselage, will be weight of our fuselage, weight of the engine, weight of the tail. So all the weight become load as well because they become the dead load. And that weight is a load because they have mass. The mass acting on the on the on the gravity, then you have weight. So the weight also must be considered as part of the load. We have thrust, we have drag. So you pull the uh, switch slash in the air, you have thrust, and uh, they have drag. So those also form order. Load the force. We have a load. The lift itself, uh, that is load. And then ground as you landing the aircraft, your main gear, your landing gear. Uh, were uh, acting on the aircraft structure. So that is also from a load we must consider. Especially when you do the repair, the repair very near to the landing gear and then obviously we have no choice. We have to make sure uh, you account for the uh, landing, uh, the load when the aircraft landing and take off. Wing, we have weight of the wing, we have engine, we have lift, drag and maneuver load. So that wing will experience, they have their own weight. Uh, they also have engine attached to it. They have, uh, okay, they, we have lift, we have drag. There's also forces and maneuver load. As you make a turn, you, uh, you, you yaw the aircraft, you dive, you pitch up. Those are the maneuver and those maneuver will add additional uh, load to the aircraft wing. Then we have stabilizer. Uh, we have stabilizer, which is horizontal and vertical. The construction almost the same. You can see a small wing. So we have weight, we have lift, we have drag, we have maneuver load. That happened on the vertical stabilizer. Similarly, uh, for horizontal, you have uh, weight itself, lift and drag, and uh, maneuver load. So it's almost identical for both of these. Uh, uh, such a in the loop. So here we call it VN diagram. So what we have here is the load factor, G load, and then the speed. So we have a boundary, very strange uh, shape here. So here is the operating limitation of the aircraft for the structure to be able so, I mean, for the, for the structure not to be damaged. If you operate beyond this boundary, the structure will be damaged. For example, if you fly higher than this speed here, aircraft structure will be damaged. If you pull the G minimum uh, away from this, will be damaged. If you pull high G, uh, higher than this uh, uh, limit and will also damage the aircraft. So we call this a VN diagram. So if you look at, uh, you go Google A380 flutter test program uh, and the flutter test was stopped at Mark 92. Uh, when the part of the landing gear structure failed, disintegrated in flight, uh, some portion of the big one, small portion of it, and then they have to stop the test, the flutter test, and they brought back 
aircraft to the hangar, they repair the aircraft, took them two weeks to redesign the area, then they flew back again and they get 0.96 mark. Okay, 0.96 of speed of sound. So they have to dive the aircraft. So when they dive the aircraft, they are in this region here. So they are outside the standards. Uh, uh, they call it VNE, maneuver speed. Yeah. So it's beyond that, and potentially it happened before. The first try, they fail the uh, the landing gear structure. So we do not go into this for this course. However, this one just a basis uh, for you to understand. There is a boundary of operating the aircraft. We could, the boundary will uh, protect the structure from damage because if you go beyond this boundary, the structure will be damaged. So here is uh, what the aircraft, uh, this is from the A320 uh, structure repair manual. And uh, what is interesting here, you can see the structure component of the aircraft. Just like I was telling you, there is a no section, forward fuselage section. This is a center section where they have wing box inside there. Uh, seven is, uh, okay, the next after here is uh, aft fuselage. And here is the cross section. We have vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer. We have wing, we have wing. Also, we do have nacelle. So that is complete aircraft assembly. And this is the piece that I was telling you has been made all around the world. And uh, they, in Toulouse, they put these pieces together. In fact, the one that we make in uh, in Batu Berendam, I think sent to UK to British Aerospace, British, British Aerospace that make the wing and, and our piece will be part of the wing and they the ship the wing section to Toulouse for final assembly. And here in the menu itself explain to you there are numbers and each numbers also there is uh, uh, ATA references and also the designation, the name. Uh, normally for Boeing, I'm not really sure about Airbus, for this references here will be the drawing. So you can go to drawing office and you can look for the drawing, they will give you the drawing. They can extract out the drawing for you of that particular parts or particular system. Okay. Okay, look at the detail of the, someone asking about the wing joint. So here is the center, here is the center fuselage. Inside the center fuselage, uh, bottom part of it is a center wing section. So that is where it, this outer wing will be bolted to this mount here. This is a wing mount here. Wing fittings here, this wing fitting on the on this side and they bolt up them together. And here is the detail of the uh, fuselage, how the fuselage look like. Okay, so like I have been telling you all the time, the such a construction of aircraft is very basic. You have skin, you have stringers, you have bar head, you have frame, and you have uh, you have frame by yeah stiffness. So you can see. Uh, uh, the old, many pieces here, uh, they build up the piece from skin, riveting to frame, riveting to stringer, stiffness, and then uh, part of the uh, section make up another section of the big fuselage, so uh, big structure. So it's just a collection of pieces being riveted together. So here you can see the skin, okay? and then you can see there is a frame. And you can see longitudinal small pieces that are running from nose to tail. Those are stringers. So we have frame, we have skin, we have stringers. And at the cutout here, they have special frame. And uh, some section, they have also a heavy thick section machine part. And we call that as a uh, 
Longeron. Normally for C130, there is one underneath here be, behind the door, uh, below the door. We, we walk below the cargo troop door. Uh, before the cargo, before the, uh, this is opening. So it's a cargo entrance door here because you're under, uh, uh, below that. Okay, also we do have, uh, here is floor beam. Floor beam, uh, uh, we have a massive structure here we, from uh, this frame to this frame. Along the frame, from nose to tail, we also have uh, some vertical support because this is long distance here. When you have long distance, potentially we can buckle this. So this is support here, we call it vertical strut. The support section of the uh, floor beam. Uh, and then, but you cannot put in the middle because we load the cargo here. There's a cargo container that go down here and been uh, placed underneath this. We also have the blue one, the blue, the blue, the turquoise one here. Potentially, this is the seat track. Some part, some of this is the seat track. Okay, oh, they call it seat rail. Question? Okay, now we move to... Uh, the detail, we look at the detail, how detailed uh, the install, you can see, if you can see all the head here is high lock. And this is a frame, the frame basically a section, either they are one piece machine or for the lighter aircraft, they have frame made of uh, skin and, and angle. So they just constructed look like a spa, where they have the skin, they have, uh, they have the angle, top and bottom, and bottom you put the, them together, it become frame. But some modern aircraft, uh, very complex aircraft, they may machine the piece together, depending on the design. So here you can see also stringers. Okay, stringers, STRG stringers number 18. And then the stringers here will be running along, along the longitudinal section of the uh, aircraft. And you can see how they've been spliced. This is lap splice. You can see one skin, another skin. We uh, put them, uh, we re reverted them together. So this is a typical lap splice between top and bottom, half of the first slice. Okay, question, no more? Okay, no, okay. Now we go to empennage, we go to wing. Wing empennage, which, which is horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer. The design construction is almost identical. They have webs, half webs, forward webs. Uh, they have, uh, sorry, half spa, forward spa. The spa is a construction of having cap top and bottom, and there is a web uh, reverted to it. So that's a spa. And the whole spa section will be part of the uh, wing, uh, bo wing box beam. Wing box structure. Okay. And the wing also having uh, uh, the front one, uh, which is uh, leading edge, and the behind one is trailing edge. So some of it are only a second structure. So, and also to get the flow, good flow over the wing to get the lift. So, uh, the main structure wing is a box here, which is a half spa, forward spa. They put them together and there is also the skin running across uh, the span of the wing and those uh, making up the uh, the wing uh, the wing assembly sections. So similarly with the vertical stabilizer, it's almost look like a wing. Uh, they have also spars, they have also ribs. So rib is a A4 shape structure which is used to keep the A4 section. We have horizontal stabilizer. This is a component of horizontal stabilizer, the detail of horizontal stabilizer. What is important here, you can see station. Yeah, so you see here, uh, horizontal stabilizer, stabilizer station. Horizontal uh, is uh, horizontal stabilizer vertical station. So there is a term we can use here. 
Okay, and then the next one, I think is Nas uh, we had talked about Nasser. Nasser is uh, not really related to this subject here, same as the repair. However, there are some instances you may want to do a quick repair or temporary repair. You may end up uh, working, uh, repairing them using a standard mechanical uh, fastener like rivets. So what is important here, you can see this nacelle here is enclosure for the engine. So they design a lips for the engine intake, also design the exhaust so you can channel out the exhaust, sorry, the exhaust cone here. And this is the, uh, this is the uh, pylon, eh? pylon which is part of it attached to the wing. Not many uh, sheet metal here because I'll focus more on sheet metal repair because the main activity of repairing the aircraft will be sheet metal. And for here, if you got damage, most of the time this component will be brought to the shop and it will be under the shop repair. So shop repair is not necessary sheet metal. Then the next one is landing gear. We have landing gear is part of the structure, not necessary uh, the structure where they maintain the aircraft uh, shape, maintain the aircraft strength. But this landing gear will be the one that transmitting the load to the whole structure. Because when the aircraft landing, when the aircraft take off, aircraft take off at full weight. So those are transmitted, the load transmitted to the landing gear to the fuselage. Similarly, when you are landing. The landing is more critical because there are several landing conditions where uh, you need to justify. Uh, the worst one is the land, uh, one wheel landing. So that landing gear absorb everything and then the transmitted to all the structure members. Why we learn a lot about load here? Because load will be the most important thing that we need to do, we need to determine before we start this the analysis of the repair. And the load also will contribute to the stresses. So we try to, in repair, we try to minimize the load as much as possible. And for us also to determine, uh, for, for us to also reduce the uh, stresses, load stress. Load area stress, load over area is stress. Stress compared to the aircraft, uh, compared to the material strength. So that's how, that's why load is very important. And also you need to know the load the direction, uh, where are the load being applied to the structure, and which direction the structure will react because they're also important in the analysis. Some design other, but nowadays they are, do not have that the design anymore because now they use fail safe or damage tolerant. Because the frame, if you say uh, crack one frame, and then you can see here a uh, crack stopper. So if you got crack here, the crack stopper behind here will stop it from growing. So that's why we call here is a uh, we call here is fail safe structure design. The answer is no, but the old aircraft, yes. For the current aircraft, no, because most of this frame here designed to the uh, philosophy of fail safe or damage tolerant. Fail safe, one of the criteria of fail safe like this, uh, they are the crack stopper, they are the, because the crack stopper will, will prevent the crack grow rapidly. So, however, when you see the crack, you must repair. And for damage tolerant, you know when it will crack to the critical level. So that's the beauty of damage tolerant. But if you put this into damage tolerant, it's very difficult because damage tolerant very, uh, very critical on the inspection interval. So now you have to inspect all the frame all the time, then you've got problem. Uh, all design, uh, okay, this skin here is 2024. And old design, the frame is 7075 because the frame here need to be strong. And then they, read, they use 7075 because 7075 aluminum is stronger than 2024. So they do not want to use 2024 because it can be heavy. So they want to be thinner, then they use 7075. However, 7075 is more 
uh, sustainable to fatigue. The fatigue life is uh, shallow, is shorter. So uh, that happened to 747-400, the early version of 747-400. They have to replace all this frame because the frame was made of 7075 and the frame start to crack. Okay, so now from that, most of it is using 2024. So they try to use uh, material which is more, uh, is, is uh, material friendly to fatigue, uh, not, not uh, material that uh, easily uh, fail because of fatigue. So that is one design, okay. Some design nowadays, uh, if you have complete composite aircraft, you still have frame, but this frame is, a, uh, is another free fabricated composite uh, component, which is bonded together to the skin. Uh, they, but there's no, no frame made of steel because it can be very heavy. Either, say, either the aluminum alloy stronger than the skin, which is 7075, which they have problem because of the fatigue crack, or the same uh, material, same material to the skin. Uh, they don't mix composite and, and, and uh, metallic. Uh, so there are construction of composite, similar construction, there's a frame with the skin. There is a very little stiffness because they already have those, uh, uh, honeycomb core, uh, those uh, those kind of structure, and uh, if laminate also for fuselage is solid laminate, they do it in the using film winding. They don't back like we do those uh, small piece. So seven thousand series is stronger, is brittle. Two thousand series is a bit uh, softer, uh, less strength than seven series. However, it is ductile, so it is hard uh, to fail in fatigue. And for the uh, two for six thousand series, the most most of it for six thousand series, uh, six thousand series you can well. Uh, so two thousand series, seven thousand series you cannot well. For six thousand series, if you anneal back to zero, you can weld them together. So that's a great, yes, aluminum got great. Great not because of quality, <laughs> great of their uh, features, the strength, their, their characteristic, yes. But you won't, you won't get this info anywhere because this is methodology. So you can see a class structure repermanent, you can see the material type, you can see 2000 series, 7000 series, 6000 series, and also you can see uh, quite popular, uh, the aircraft structure, the OEM will put AISI, AISI 301 steel, stainless steel, uh, as part in the SRM because that can be used to repair, uh, as a double repair if the required aluminium become very thick and then we use the stainless steel because stainless steel strength is about double than aluminium. 